Commander Exegius, and today we're going to be looking at how to set up the controller overlay I use when I stream or record video. This is made possible by the wonderful tool GamePadViewer.com by Mr. McPone. As it's web-based, it will generate a web page with a transparent background such that you can overlay this into your recording and streaming application. I'll specifically be using Streamlabs OBS, but the process should be the same regardless of your streaming application. It should be noted that I do not see this on screen while playing. It is only overlaid into OBS for streaming or recording. We should start by saying this is rather complex to set up, and while we'll go step by step, if you need specific support for Gamepad Viewer, you'll need to contact their support resources. I'll be focusing on how to use the specific theme that I commissioned, designed by the talented Commander Metsus. As considerable time and resources went into the creation of this skin, I'd like to ask that when used for non-commercial purposes, credit is given to my channel on any streams or videos. If used on monetized videos or streams that receive donations, please contact me about a very modest licensing fee. Now let's look at setting this up. First, you'll need to understand that the overlay is broken into three different skins. One for my stick, one for my throttle, and one for my pedals, all separately. If you're using a single controller, such as the T-Flight X, you'll just use the same device number for each as we go through the tutorial. We'll start by determining your controller IDs, as the application can only read your first four joystick devices. If you have more than that, such as myself, you'll need to disconnect and reconnect them such that all four show up first as there is no way to specify the order of these devices in Windows. To determine these IDs, we'll start with the website html5gamepad.com. Every link we'll discuss will be in the description below. Once you've opened HTML5 Gamepad, check the names of each of the four devices, ensuring that your devices are being displayed. If not, you'll need to disconnect and reconnect them until they are all shown. Move or press buttons on the various devices to ensure that input is being received. Again, if not, disconnect and reconnect until they are being detected in red. If you're not getting data here, you won't be successful later. Now, let's head to GamePadViewer.com and once open, refresh the page immediately. Once you see currently viewing at the top, select the player number that corresponds to the device number from our previous step. In my example, I'll be using player number 4, which is my throttle. You should now see a virtual Xbox controller. Move a few axes and press a few buttons to ensure you're getting input. If nothing is changing, refresh the screen and configure your controller ID and player number until you are seeing some sort of on-screen results. Now we need to set the correct skin and map your various buttons. To do this, open the menu in the upper left and then select Generate URL. Once open, first select the appropriate player number from before and under Custom CSS URL, you'll need to paste in the appropriate URL in the description of this video. As I'll be setting up my throttle, I'll be using that URL first. Note that even if you're using a single device, you'll be setting up each one separately, so you'll need to use each of the three style sheets. Next, we'll map the appropriate buttons for the throttle by selecting Remap Buttons at the top. First, select your controller number from before, and again, ensure that you're receiving input from the device. We'll map the Boost button first, with the various buttons available shown on screen now. For Boost, we'll select LB slash L1 for the left bumper, click the Click to Set button, and press the corresponding button on your controller. You should then see the button number displayed. You'll continue this to add ECM, heatsink, and shield generator in the same manner, with the correct buttons on screen now. If these buttons are on other devices, you'll need to use a third-party application such as Joy2Key or X360CE to rebind those to be on your throttle. Alternatively, if you're so inclined, the skins can be recreated as they're fully customizable to meet your needs. Now that we've set up the buttons, we'll need to bind the axes for the throttle and thrusters as my thrusters are on my throttle as well. When adding the new line for it, we'll change it to axis and choose RS vertical. Now click the checkbox beside the button and change it to fix type to stick. Now find the lowest value, click to set value, and move your throttle to full throttle. Yes, it's inverted. Wait 3 seconds to complete the mapping, and do the same for highest value, setting that to zero throttle. Note that it's possible your axes are different than mine, so you may need to adjust this later. Click the plus to add another line, changing it to axis once again and selecting RS horizontal, 
then clicking disable to set it to red. Next, we need to bind our lateral and vertical thrusters by adding another line, selecting axis and selecting LS vertical. Click click to set for the positive axis and press full down thruster, repeating this for negative axis to full up thruster. Add yet one more line, another axis for LS horizontal, setting positive axis to full right thruster and negative to full left thruster. Now click apply mapping and ensure that everything shows green. Now we'll create the final URL that we'll bring into our streaming application by clicking export mapping to URL generator. Scroll down the page ensuring that player number is set correctly. At the bottom under custom CSS URL, ensure that the appropriate URL from the description box is pasted in here throttle. Click the huge URL that's generated at the top which will copy it to your clipboard. Open a new tab in your browser and paste this in. Ensuring that you're running at 1080p resolution or you may need to change the zoom level so you can see the full page properly. Move your throttle and thrusters, pressing the various buttons to ensure that you're getting input. If your axes are backwards, return to remap button and adjust these as necessary. To complete the skin, you'll need to add the final style tag to the URL, which is also included in the description below. Move to the end of the URL, paste this in and hit enter. Now the dots should be shown in the proper locations, moving the full range of the boxes. Save this URL for later. Now we need to repeat this for the stick and pedals overlay. Starting with the stick, first refresh gamepadviewer.com to reset everything. Closing the menu and selecting our next controller. In my case, player 3, again confirming that we're getting input. Open the menu again, selecting remap buttons and be sure to select your device at the top. Add a new mapping for chaff and flight assist off, both of which are on my stick, with flight assist off being RB slash R1 and chaff being the Y button. Now we'll add pitch and roll by adding another mapping for an axis, LS horizontal and vertical. For horizontal, positive is full right with negative being full left. For LS vertical, positive will be up or back with negative being down or forward, again depending on how your axes are bound. Click apply mapping, confirming all is green, then click export mapping to URL generator. Be sure to select your player number again, then under custom CSS URL, enter the URL for the stick in the description below. Again, copy the huge URL by clicking on it, then opening that in your browser, ensuring that everything is tracking properly, going back and adjusting your axes as necessary. Finally, add the style tag once again to the end of the URL and all should look correct. Again, save this URL for later. Finally, let's end with our yaw axis or pedals. Again, refresh gamepadviewer.com to start over, selecting your player number at the top and ensuring you're getting input from your axis. Open the menu and select remap buttons, selecting your player number at the top and clicking add new mapping. Select axis, then RS horizontal, setting positive to full right yaw and negative to full left. Add another line, selecting axis, then RS vertical, then click disable. Click apply mapping, ensuring all is green, then select export mapping to the URL generator. At the top, ensure you have the correct player number set, scroll to the bottom and enter the custom URL for the pedals in the description below. One last time, add the style tag once again to the end of the URL and all should look correct. And one last time, save this URL. Now that you've generated the three URLs for the three devices, we need to bring these into OBS or your recording application. I'll be using Streamlabs OBS, but other streaming apps that support web pages should work. In Sources, click Plus and select Browser Source, naming it for the appropriate device of the three and click Add New Source. In URL, paste in the URL we saved from before, setting width and height to 1920 by 1080. Then click Shut Down Source when not visible and refresh browser when scene becomes active. Once you click Done, if all has gone to plan, you'll see the overlay in OBS. Repeat these steps for all three devices, making sure they are all aligned with each other so they stack and appear as a single display. Finally, you may need to add a web page to OBS for the original application we used, HTML5 Gamepad Tester, as it's possible and likely that the device IDs will change in the browser inside OBS. Keep this hidden, save for when you first open OBS so you can see what devices are assigned to which ID. When changed, just open each of the items in your sources list, changing P equals to the newly assigned number. 
as I have over 15 joystick devices, I have to do this every time I open Streamlabs OBS. While this is in no way a simple process, and you may need to make changes based on your controller bindings, once set up, it's great to see your various controller inputs. Not only is it helpful for your viewers to see what you're doing in real time, recording a session and analyzing your flight inputs later can be an excellent learning aid. While I can do my best to help in the comments below, due to the complexity of this setup, you may need to contact support for GamePadViewer.com directly. Also, please remember that I'd like you to include credit to me in any streams or videos where you use the overlay. If you'd like to use it in a commercial way or in monetized videos or streams, please contact me about a very modest licensing fee. Once again, this has been Commander Exegius reminding you to fly dangerously and thanks for watching. If you found that tutorial rather complex, don't worry. Most of my content is far more straightforward. I hope you'll join me on my weekly live streams, Tutorial Tuesdays, and the Creators Roundtable each Friday, and that you'll consider supporting my efforts via Patreon.